we're just thrilled to be here. Uh, um, seems like years ago that we were here in March. Uh, I know um, your SID thought it was like yesterday, but to us it was a long time ago. Very cold. Um, you know, it's unfortunate we have to play an SEC school in a super regional, and especially uh, against people that you like. Um, and Ralph and Karen and Marty are just great people. We respect them. We respect their players. It's been so much fun to play and coach next to Raven for four years. Um, you know, you watch their success and how they grow as, as athletes and kids, and it's um, it's a lot of fun. You know, and we enjoy playing Tennessee. Uh, it's a good rivalry. It's not a nasty rivalry. Um, we respect them, and uh, it's just unfortunate. I think both sides would say that that you know one of us doesn't get to go to the World Series after this weekend. Questions for the student athletes. So about facing Tennessee here at home, you guys uh, dropped the first series playing them here two three. Let's talk about playing them here. Yeah, I mean. You can only expect it to be a great series. I've been here for four years, and every single time we play Tennessee, it's a phenomenal series. Um, you know, they've taken some, we've taken some, and uh, this is going to be a great atmosphere, great, great series of softball. You're seeing loads of talent, um, good coaching, good players, and it's just one of those fun places to play. You know, it's your SEC rival. Um, I've been this is my third time in Knoxville, and um, I'm just really excited to get going this weekend and and play because, um, like Murphy said, it's been a long time since Mark and we're really looking forward to um, seeing how they've changed as a team and definitely seeing how we've changed as a team. For both players, could you talk about going against Tennessee's pitching, the two sisters that uh, have very different styles, different approaches, just the problems that might present? I mean, obviously they're a great pitching staff. I mean, um, to, to take them where they've gone. I mean, like you said, they're very two different pitching styles. One throws hard and one's kind of is based on our movement and stuff. And so, I mean, obviously that that's a great combination. And um, we've tried our best. Our coaches have um, worked this whole week on trying to prepare us for both sides and having plans for, say, if this pitcher's in, then what we're going to do. And if this pitcher comes in, then, then what our adjustment is. And we just, as a team, I think we have to make sure that we understand the differences between the two and understand um, what adjustments need to be made per se for each pitcher because both of them are great pitchers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they work really well together. I mean, they um, have like strengths that, that help the other one, that make each other better. And I think that's um, really cool for a pitching staff. And um, our key is going to be is just making the adjustments quickly and understanding that they, like Hunt said, they are different. And we just got to recognize that early and then adjust as fastly uh, as, as fast as we can. Um, and that's that's how we would be successful. But they're they're tough. I mean, we've been playing them for series every single season, and they're always tough. Is in terms of making an adjustment, is it easier for you guys as hitters to go from fast to to slower or slower to fast? Do you have a preference on that? Um, I mean, I think either way, you got to have a good adjustment. I mean, from fast to slow, you got to be. A little quicker, and from fat, and from slow to fast. You know, you, you just have to understand, you know, the difference between them. There's no really, I don't think, harder one. I think both of them have two different approaches to them, in a sense. Yeah. Well, you guys have a lot of newcomers that are here for the first time. What What have you seen from them in the last couple of weeks that makes you think they're ready for this? And what will you guys? The older guys try and share with them about what to expect. Well, I mean, um, you know, they're they're young, but I think you know they've gotten better. You know, they've kind of in the beginning of the year they were kind of going through the fire in a sense, I guess, because because they're young and they haven't been there. And I think us as older people um, just kind of have to push that it's the same game. You know, um, don't try to put too much emphasis on it. Um, we're, it's just like when we were playing them in the regular season, you know, take it one step at a time, take it one pitch at a time, win this pitch, you know, um, you know, in the series, during the regular season, a play here, a play there, and, you know, it's reversed. So, you know, just, just stay within yourself and um, just play it one pitch at a time and stay in the moment. Yeah, I think the, the hardest thing for the underclassmen and the kids that didn't play a lot last year and stuff like that was finding ways to win. I mean, we lost so many games by one run and, you know, in the seventh inning. And so for those kids, they didn't understand what it took to win those games. And so what we we basically did is went kind of went 
not back to the drawing board, but we just got in, did a lot of extra work, um, figured out how to work a little bit harder, push yourself a little bit more, and then kind of break through that wall of, of losing and, and transition to, okay, this is what it takes to win, this is what we're going to have to play consistently every single game to get the W at the end of the day. You've been facing um, Raven for the last four years. <coughs> um, comparisons are unavoidable. What, what do you appreciate about how she plays and how she sets the table? I have a tremendous amount of respect for her because um, she's just so dangerous at the plate. You don't know what she's going to do. She can hit, bunt, slap. and. Um, I love the triple threat part of the softball world as, as in the lefties. Um, it's just, it's so, um, it's it's so much skill and it's not like that, you know, power is really awesome, you know, but I don't really have much of it. So I appreciate the, um, you know, the skillfulness of the short game and she does it perfectly. I mean, she's a great executor. She, she plays the game, um, you know, fundamentally and that's the, that's that's really something to respect about another player especially if it's something you do and then you see somebody else that does it just as well as you it's it's something fun to watch um, it's something special whether Jackie's at a hundred percent or 75 what, what intangibles do you love about her that she will be able to provide this weekend to get you guys to the World Series I think Jack's a fighter I think um, what you don't see is how much she appreciates and loves her teammates and Jackie has never ever been the kind of pitcher that's all about herself she's never like I want this game for me I want the W I want this many strikeouts she has never ever had that she wants to win for her teammates and that's it and so the love she has for her teammates is gonna drive her to pitch her absolute best even if she's not 100% um, and that's what I love most about Jackie is she's a selfless player I think too coming back to you know, she's a selfless player. You know, back last year, I mean, she had our back a lot. And, you know, throughout this whole this whole year, she's had our back a lot. So I think, you know, in that sense that she's one of those selfless players, you know, it, it makes you want to play good behind her. You know, if, if especially being a middle infielder, being a second baseman, you know, it's, it's nice to, if you do make an error on a routine ball that's right at you, you know, Jack's not the pitcher that when you look up there, she's like, oh, come on, you know, kind of thing. So, I mean, it's it's really good to have that kind of presence on the mound from her because it makes you want to have her back, you know, even even if she's not at 100%, she's at 75%, whatever. You know, um, we as a team want to play for her. It, she makes us want to, even though she doesn't expect it of us. We want to play for her. Coach, just talking about the difference this year, you know, you win the championship last year, I mean, going on the road in the, the Super Regional and maybe almost being like a little bit of an underdog here. Just talk about the difference. In exactly. Uh, you know, it wasn't, I think it was 2007, the last time we went on the road for a Super Regional. And um, Chad Haney, our radio guy, looked it up this, this week. And we're the only team in the country that's been to all nine Super Regionals. So it's really cool for us. And I think only three have been on the road. Uh, so... It's exciting, you know. This is, you know, one point in the season we had seven different people in the lineup than last year, and only one senior, and it was Bro. And like Beth said, it was. It, there's been a lot of young kids that have played, and some new kids that weren't used to that that atmosphere of they have to be the it person. And it took a while, you know. It's all of a sudden you go from freshman that doesn't have to play much that can cheer for everybody, and now boom, you're hitting in the five spot, and you're expected to to get the RBIs. That's a big change and it it took a while and I think um, this situation this year it's a very young team and I think it's going to be great for us you know to play in front of you know 2,000 um, orange and white fans. Uh, it's something totally different. We've been used to it all year long though. I think everywhere we've gone they had a record crowd and uh, it's just it's just been an amazing um, journey this year with the crowds. It's it's been unbelievable, and I'm definitely going to tell Mr. Hart that he's going to need more bleachers uh, from here on out. Patrick, although the, the lineup's vastly different from last year, the re returning players you have, I think the experience of winning it all serves it well in these kind of games when it's do or die. Oh, I definitely think so. I mean, with Bro and and Conley, and you know, we have three other seniors that maybe not have started a lot, but. They're all servant leaders, you know, and they put the team first, and they keep everybody in line if they don't put the team first. And that's, you know, that's one of the greatest qualities of the kids that come through this program. It's team first. 
um, whatever else second and they don't let anybody get that out of line and I just think with with those those five that experienced it last year um, four juniors you know they got to see it too uh, it's going to help us down the road and this weekend for sure you guys have been through this in Tuscaloosa Pat and if you go to Oklahoma you'll you'll be dealing with the aftermath of the big tornado out there what what are your thoughts about now as, as you well, prepare for the games yeah I mean sitting at home watching a video of Tennessee on my computer and watching CNN on the TV screen and seeing the same exact things that we went through two years ago I mean you know a TV reporter drove by a neighborhood and and uh, they interviewed a lady and asked you know how she was doing and her home is rubble and I mean it was the exact same thing in Tuscaloosa I can remember asking a lady if she was okay and she looked at me and she said I'm blessed I'm blessed thank you and she's sitting on the roof of her her uh, house on the ground and that was all that was left of her house and it was almost the same interview in Oklahoma uh, this couple and they told the reporter that they were they were doing good and they had each other and I think that's I mean the similarities between the people of Oklahoma and the people of Alabama are just so so tight and just great people up there and you know we've been at the World Series eight times and just it seems like when Oklahoma wasn't there they kind of adopted us as their team and maybe they did maybe they didn't it just seemed like that to me um, but we feel for the people of Oklahoma and um, you know it's going to take some time but they're going to get through it.